Uh, I thought I'd take a break from all the high heat races because they're getting kind of repetitive. So, uh, yeah, it means I never get to show off some other stuff. I like all these cool, like, drift cars that I like. kind of like the design of that I did a while ago. And I just kind of wanted to show quickly this game's drifting. <clears throat> it's very simplistic. It's just, yeah, you got a combo. Uh, you get numbers as you drift, and you got to be drifting in the right direction because otherwise the game freaks out, and uh, you get a proximity bonus if you're too close to stuff, and if you hit it, you lose your whole combo. That's it. That is the whole game's drifting system, and it doesn't count. Uh, it doesn't care if you smash through things that are breakables like this, but if you touch anything solid, it will drop your combo to one again. And you can go off-road, you can do whatever. I think the numbers are counting basically. From my experience, it seems to be the speed, the length of the drift are massive. It doesn't seem to really... Like, the proximity bonus is the only other thing, and I don't know what the bonus actually applies. It just says proximity bonus, and it could be like just adding a flat number on top, or it could just be like a secret additional multiplier, I don't know. <clears throat> it doesn't really explain itself, but it doesn't have to. The events are relatively easy. You can see here I'm doing a free lap race and I've pretty much hit the target within the first lap. Now about 60k away from, points away from beating this level. And if you have a car with enough power in it like this Corvette, which is very cool, uh, and it's slidey enough, you will be fine. But I'm not even taking that. I'm, just, I'm hitting trees, I'm sliding all over. I'm smashing into random fences. I'm hitting this tree. I'm phasing through them in geometry. It's fine. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I like this car. I like the what I've done with it, if I do say so myself. I like the paint job. I like the bodywork. I like the sound it makes. I like the fact that it drifts. I made this car because I found that my RX-7 was starting to feel a little underpowered, but not really for the events. I can use my RX-7 and beat every event. What I can't do is use my RX-7 to consistently freestar every single activity that's a drift zone in the game. There's not many drift zones in the game, but some require some specific things from you, so I'll just kind of quickly talk about that, I guess. Some of them require really high uh, things in a very short, like, singular turn, and if you want to get, like, its length and speed of the drift, so if you want to do some of those drift zones, you need a powerful car that will just power through the corner, and the RX-7 tends to bottom out and spin, or just have to do lots of mini drifts around one big sweeping turn, because it can't get enough speed up without you nosing into the uh, corner. So it's not, you need something a little more powerful after a while. Um, so I made this car to combat that. I just kind of span out there, I had to itch my face. So yeah, you know, uh, I made this to combat that, and uh, I still got some drift stages to complete, to be honest, because some of them, uh, some, like, one of them, there's literally, like, one or two in the entire game that are off-road drift stages. So they're basically saying, nah, man, create a car and spend a load of time grinding up a car, and they don't tell you which car they want you to use, they just say, find a car that we decided was good for drift and good for off-road, and it's just a random car. I don't think it's the Mitsubishi Lancer that I've been working on to try and do that, so I don't know what it wants from me. Like, do you want me to drift a pickup truck? Like, I don't think I can. Uh, and um, <clears throat> there's no events that say you need to be off-road and you need to drift in the entire game, as far as I'm aware. But 
like there are two drift stages in the game where they're like no make a whole car just to drift off road on this sand pit or quarry and like it's just one or two drift stages so i haven't done those yet we'll go do another drift stage we'll do this one see so yeah, these are not too difficult but like i find them more relaxing and fun than doing race after race after race after race or just constantly doing the activities because after a while you get a bit tired of like you were one yard or ten points away from freestarring this activity do it all again and you're like oh no <laughs> Now you could make the Corvette a race spec and it would also be very fun to drive. Uh, I just decided to make a drift one because I only have two drift cars in the whole game, so including this one. I'm also looking into doing more off-road cars, but like there aren't many events of that I will say. Let's go get to the next event. Ah, uh, truck. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there we go. So the drifting in this game is kind of fun, it's fun enough, but I feel like they could have put a lot more sport into it, and there could be a lot more of like, you know, there'd be an actual thing here, rather than, oh, uh, you know, just chuck in a few drift events and then say, oh yeah, there we go, and have one side story that's like four events and then they're done. Just forget about it. Because it's like, it's... I would just drift instead if there was like enough stuff like to do and it's like again it's a kind of like a lack of content to this game. It's just a shame. I miss uh, to be honest, uh, I feel like my favorite game for drifting was Grid One because they really put some effort into like, I mean, I don't know if it holds up now, because uh, when I played that, it was like 2009, 2008? I can't remember when that came out. And I was playing that game, and like, they did a whole like, Japanese street setting thing, and like, like, separate areas for you to do it, and had a Japanese commentator, uh, like announcing what you were doing as you were doing it and they had a lot of like UI elements that made it look quite complicated and stuff and I remember like honestly liking a lot of the management elements of Grid 1 which they then stripped out for Grid 2 <laughs> and then it just kind of disappeared whereas like you can choose your teammate you can buy cars, you can like buy cars on eBay, you can change your team name, you can change your team livery, and like a lot of this stuff got kind of cut out of the grid too, and simplified a lot, so that was a shame, so I was enjoying that. And the whole you can drive as a team, as your team, or you can just drive as like a separate racer on like, you know, on contract with this other team and like that was all really cool and I like that. It's sad that they kind of simplified it down afterwards. I know a lot of games now have drift elements to them. I played a game, I played uh, my friend's version of Forza and they have some drift elements in uh, like, what was it, Forza 6, Forza 7? Not Horizon, like the, uh, and they had drifting stuff and like in Gran Turismo Sport you have some drifting stuff you can do but like I haven't really tried it as much, you know, so. Oh, well, the underpowered there, let's get some speed up. Let's see, it's not really particularly hard to hit the goals I'm looking for here. Oops. That is nice, it's more relaxing. Don't really have to do as much, and I like drifting, so this is fun for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll show my other car, my RX-7, and do some drifts in the next video, and then, like... Yeah, that's basically drifting.
Woot. Can I show some off-roading too? Hmm. Fancy.